Hey, what up guys? Phil here. Um, while I'm waiting for that crepe myrtle bow to uh, dry, I have uh, decided to do a little series on my crossbows. And uh, basically all this, what got me fired back up in all this bushcraft and uh, bows and crossbows and stuff like that is when we went to the uh, Renaissance Fair in Austin, Texas, the Sherwood Forest, for, that, Sher, Sherwood Forest Fair. And uh, everyone's walking around with these self bows and stuff and it was cool, I was like, started asking the guys you know they're all decked out in the uh medieval stuff and i started asking them about the bows and things and they telling me all this information i just was like oh my god this is like going to be my pathway to figure out and all these awesome old bows and stuff so i was like cool and they gave me some books to you know research and all kind of stuff so it was cool they were really cool and uh but <laughs> when we was walking around the fair there was this dude you know he's over there in his little booth and he was making these uh marshmallow crossbows basically just a uh, stick with a handle on it with a one piece one strip of banded material that went across you know banded material off the pallets and like when you get stuff in and uh, it had just one strip of banded material and it pull it back and it had a little trigger device and boom and then you could launch a marshmallow 10 12 feet maybe or a nerf dart 10 feet or something and I was like dude that's pretty cool you know and, and was looking at it and I started to think what if you added more than one band of banded material kind of like a leaf spring and this is what can happen i've added uh i think 11 10 or 11 pieces this is 14 inches across the longest one and then it diminishes each uh, successant so yeah every band after that is cut by an inch so it's a half inch increment in between bands now when this is unstrung, which is hard to do, um, when this is unstrung, it looks like a uh, V. It comes right off and it V's off that way and V's off that way. When you string it, it looks like this. Now, this was before I learned about tillering processes and all this other kind of stuff. I just figured, you know, this is how it should be. And uh, this is a piece of red oak branch. You can see that it's still got the knots in it. And this is just one of the branches that was coming off of it. It grew like this. And the branch was going off. And I said, hey, that's a cool little handle, you know. So I grabbed that. And I put me some leather, you know, after I carved it out and made it straight and all that. And uh, this is a piece of, uh, I don't know what it was, but it, it worked out good. It's actually a piece of the uh, original stick bow I made. Um some of that kind of stuff it's real springy so i was able to heat it up and bend it down that hold that captures the arrows and uh this is just another piece of that same stuff that comes down with a peg drove driven in here to hold it and, and the pegs glued in and uh this peg here has a uh, peg that's held in here with some artificial sinew and you can see how it works i mean it, it's nothing elaborate or fancy it's just a uh, when you pull in on it it releases the string see it sits like that and then when you pull in on it it releases the string like that and uh this is basically a souped up version of that uh ren fair thing and now let me tell you something <laughs> this thing is significantly hard to pull back and it uh it's got some issues but i wanted to make it all out of wood you know except for the band of material or and uh, my prototypes, instead of having a wood peg here, I actually used a bolt. And uh, that bolt was a lot slicker. It worked a lot better on the release. And instead of all this trigger part, it just had a nut on the end. It had a bolt head on top. It went through, and I crammed a, a nut on there all the way to the last thread. And uh, beat up, you know, beat up the thread where it needed to stop, and crammed it on there, and then cut it off nice and smooth on the bottom. So then you just had a nut that would release that, which worked great. It was a lot smoother. This wood causes a lot of drag and resistance, and uh, is part of the downfall of the design of this. But I wanted to keep it, you know, traditional, and uh, I think I pretty much did a good job. That that's held on with two uh, wood pegs there too, and glue. And uh, but I mean, it's pretty damn simple. And then slotted this out actually slotted this out by rubbing a welding rod back and forth through it because I had one available. <laughs> Anyways, so same thing. This is held on with a band of material here and it slotted out so the arrow comes across. The band of material is down there. I got two nails there and uh, two nails here. And the band of material holds the bow on. 
and uh, let's see what it'll do. Now it's not super accurate. It's not like you're going to, uh, you know, shoot a bird at 50 yards away. You'd definitely launch an arrow 50 yards probably, but let's see what it'll do here at close range. My arrows went through a uh, a variety of different kinds before I came up with something that was pretty effective. My first ones I was like total ren fair action. So I made these awesome little mini fletched, you know, straighten us out, had them. These are awesome, they fit in there good and, and launch pretty good. I didn't put any tips on them because I took them to ren fair, you know, but and uh, but it, everyone was tripping out on my bow at ren fair because it was pretty heavy. And uh, those fly amazingly, but not, not as good as the ones I made that had tips on them. I made a whole set like that. And these are uh, pigeon feathers or something. But, uh, <laughs> and uh, actually two feather fletch, you know. But uh, after that, I was like, I don't want to ruin those. I came up with uh, this. So well, maybe I could use a, uh, this one that was next. Oh no, next I came up with this. Which was a, a pineapple, a mini, mini, mini pineapple cam broadhead, which I uh, made that, uh, I took actually the quarter that I usually split and qu and folded that one in half and then did another one, you know, and then just held it on with duct tape because that's how ghetto fabulous I am. But watch this. <laughs> with a pineapple cam broadhead right there to the, uh, let's see, to my little bow, bow holder thing, oak. All right. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Now, right into red oak. I mean, a uh, white oak. <laughs> Pineapple can. Okay, now that thing's in there. <clears throat> you always got to watch not cut your fingers off of that. So, uh, after that, I was like, well, that's a pain in the butt to make those. So, I made a couple of these just for shooting. And just wrapped some uh, tape, you know, black tape. Because uh, bamboo skewers are pretty straight already. They don't require much. And then I decided to put a little black tape fletching on it. And these work pretty good. These are good. These will launch a long ways. And uh, before they would actually stick into stuff. Let's see. I might get this one to stick into this. No, it ain't going to stick into that. But uh, it would probably stick in the shed. Let's see. That thing's super hard to pull back. Hell, it may stick in that. Let's see. Let's see if I can get just a regular bamboo stick to stick right in that oak. No, nope. it bounced off. Anyways, and then after that, I knew I was heading in the right direction with those uh, bamboo skewers. So I made a. And the band, I, went, I stuck with a banded material thing and made me some banded material arrows, uh, broadheads, and uh, used packing tape for the fletching. And uh, this one was like pretty cool. I mean, the design of the fle fletching back there sucks because it's too wide. It would kind of take off and just fly around like an airplane sometimes in the wind because that fletching was too big. But I know I was getting on to getting into something when I started making them like this which was a you know something else badass and uh, so after that I refined it some more decided it didn't need that much fletching on it because it you know had enough weight up front and uh, refined it down a little bit now I've shot this a lot and it's not as sharp as it needs to be but uh, not quite as wide of a broadhead and not wide of uh, as of uh, fletching on it. Let's see how he does. Alright. Alright, we'll try to shoot it into that hard hat right there. Yeah, <laughs> what? Now you tell me that ain't some power coming out of that little tiny crossbow, and I'll tell you you are inaccurate. <laughs> yeah, the thing's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all right guys that's my little crossbow now for range and stuff like that 
it'll launch them far but if you hit it you're you're pretty dang amazing because of the the jerkiness of the trigger the trigger is not smooth at all like i say you kind of got to hold it like this and pull up and that makes it hard to aim so uh but this is it and you can see how much overdraw it has i mean it's like ridiculous overdraw but it's banded material so you can do it so it makes it nice and compact <laughs> <laughs> so this is a cool little thing and uh call it what you want but this thing's out badass so uh, i'll see if it'll stick in this uh stick in this uh crate myrtle Let's see. oh yeah <laughs> You see how it kind of came out and shot directly to the side. It's not super accurate, but this was what got me on my road to uh, thinking about bigger and better. I should have thought about smaller and better and made one like this with a better trigger, and it would just be freaking badass. Yeah, it's not accurate. But uh, we'll go over here and see if I can hit the target with it. See if I can even attempt to hit the target with it. All right, later. Okay, I'm here 35 feet away from those uh, bag targets over there. We'll see if we can hit that one in the middle there, that, that Duck Dynasty target. It's going to be amazing if this happens. Well, it hit the corner, <laughs> the top corner. Like I say, these things shoot far. And they shoot, uh, you could shoot this thing super high in the air, but it's not accurate at all. But it is fun and it was free. So, oh, I hit the bottom ground. They got new neighbors that just moved in over there, so they're gonna have to watch all my uh, arrows flying across the fence now. Oh, too low. I don't know what the draw weight on this is, but it's like way too much for what it should be. <laughs> there we go. Hit the target that time. We'll try the old pineapple tin broadhead. <laughs> I think it had some spin to it. All right. And the big old airplane fletched one. This one's probably gonna fly away like a paper airplane. It's not very good at long distance. <laughs> and I hit the target with what I said was the worst. Yeah, let's go see what happened. I think two of them hit the target. <laughs> All right. Well, I keep. At least I kept this one from going into the uh, haystack. I would have never found it. I have a bunch of these off in the haystack, actually. So, here's the other one. And uh, that. So, not too bad. I found all of them except for that. That one, oh, here he is. <laughs> so, that's, a bunch, that's my variety of arrows and uh, my awesome little band and material crossbow. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Be coming up right behind this with a uh, my PVC crossbow that I made. So stay tuned. Subscribe later.